Okay, I got my plaid shirt on, and today I'm going to show you how to install rubber feet on your cutting boards. Pretty simple stuff, but I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to make it go quick. And I have a small production run of cutting boards here, and I've oiled them, left them out for a few days, and I'm now ready to install the rubber feet and then wrap them up in plastic. So real quick, why would you want to put rubber feet on your boards? Three good reasons. One is safety. You're using a sharp knife. You don't want the board to slide around. So these cutting board feet are made from silicone rubber, and they're very soft and grip the work surface very well. So they make the board stable and keep it from sliding around. They also elevate the board a little bit to give your fingers room to grab it. And that makes it easier to handle. Elevating it also allows both sides to dry at the same time. So it's good for the board, it's good for the wood, it's good for safety. So cutting board feet make a lot of sense if you're making boards that are going to be used. These boards are all functional user boards. Sometimes cutting boards can get very intricate and decorative and they're not really intended to be used for cutting. But these are all very practical, functional boards, so putting rubber feet on them makes sense. Now, the hard part of installing rubber cutting board feet is finding the good quality product to use. But look no further. I've got the product and the solution just for you. High Falls Furniture Company offers silicone rubber bumpers with stainless steel screws covering all the food code requirements so that you can add marketability to your product by adding functionality in all of these cool designer colors. Okay, so I got a piece of scrap plywood here and I'm going to wrap it with plastic. And I'm going to do that and use it as a work surface to place the cutting boards on. And that's just to keep the cutting board clean, to keep the oil from leaching out of the board. And also to protect my workbench because I don't like to get oil on my workbenches. So I've got my pilot holes for the screws pre-drilled on the boards already. I use a 564 drill bit and I made a jig block that has two setbacks and I use this one for the small, this one for the medium and I chuck the drill so that I get about three-eighths of an inch of pilot depth. And I keep one of the holes covered with a piece of tape just so I don't risk drilling the wrong hole. But that makes it really quick. So for the cherry, you know, the black is the standard color. Uh, brown also works. You could also use this one. I, I don't know. But usually I go with the black. These screws use a number one Phillips, and they're stainless steel, so the magnetic drill bits don't really do much. So to put these on, I, I feed them through the hole first, so it acts as kind of like a bearing almost, so I can kind of guide this in. So you want to be careful not to over tighten these because the rubber is fairly soft. Um, so I use my fingers to kind of feel when the screw contacts the bottom and then I just do maybe one or three quarters of a turn to uh, tighten it down. Now, it's not a bad idea to tighten them by hand. Um, this 
screwdriver is fairly light duty. I use it for electrical work uh, so I can get really good control with it. But uh, a lot of cordless drills are really overpowered. So it's easy to over tighten. Um, you can definitely feel it a lot better with the uh, hand driver. So I'm going to use the uh, almond color for this board, give it some bigger feet. So the final step is plastic wrapping and I like to do this to keep the board clean and keep the oil from leaching out into a cardboard box or something like that. So it's a good idea to get some plastic on it. I have three different methods shown here. This one I think looks the best. It's just one layer of food film and then I stick it together on the back with the postage label. and. Uh, that also gives me a space to write the size and the price. So if I'm going to display these in a retail store, I might go this route because it looks the best. I can also use the 5 inch bundle wrap and that is effective and might not look as good but gets the job done. I can also put it in a plastic bag which is probably the fastest of the three methods but maybe a little costly. All right, so that wraps up this video. Buy my rubber feet. Get your jobs done. Satisfy your food code requirements. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. And by the way, I have a sample pack listed on eBay for sale. 35 bucks free shipping for each of all the colors and all the sizes that I stock. So if you want a variety of colors to try and products to test, this is a good starter kit. And uh, thanks for watching.